Hi, I'm Rob DiNapoli, and I'm delighted you've decided to join us for a tour of how these tomatoes make it from this field to your kitchen. Behind me is 200 acres of vine-ripened tomatoes ready to be harvested. And in just a few short hours, these tomatoes will be packed and sealed and ready for storage or consumption in your kitchen. Here's an example of uh, tomatoes that are ready for harvest. You'll notice that the plants dry as the water has been taken off of these plants to allow the fruit to separate from the vine easy in the harvesting process. Um, you'll also know that there's a mix of both immature fruit and overripe fruit. This will later be taken care of mechanically both on the harvester and in the production facility. But as I pull the canopy back, you're able to see a large amount of ripe fruit. And um, this will be good for harvesting and for canning. The farmer expects to get approximately 50 tons per acre out of a field like this. About 25% of these tomatoes will be discarded in the harvesting process and in the factory. We're here in Los Banos, California the heart of California's farm belt at Liberty Packing Company. This is where our Dinapoli tomatoes are produced. Behind me is the most technologically sophisticated processing facility in California, where our tomatoes are converted from fresh picked tomatoes to canned tomatoes efficiently and effectively. Before these tomatoes can be unloaded, the state of California requires that each load be weighed and tested for quality by one of their employees. At the grading station, samples are drawn from each gondola. The sample is inspected for mold, material other than tomatoes, green and broken fruit. Analytical tests are also performed to determine the color, sugar, and pH of the incoming fruit. Results are recorded and will determine the price the grower receives, as well as influence the tomato varieties used in future harvests. We're here at the unloading station and behind me you'll see um, over 25 loads of tomatoes being dumped per hour, two and a half uh, minutes per load. It's a very, very busy area of the plant. To avoid damaging the ripe fruit, it is transfer transferred by water in stainless steel flumes from outside by gravity into the plant and the processing facility, which we'll see in a few moments. The tomatoes are flooded first with water to soften the blow as they open the gate. Water is a scarce commodity in California and is cleaned and recycled whenever possible. To conserve energy, large ponds are used to cool recycled water. Upon exiting the gondolas, the initial objective is to isolate the fruit suitable for peeling. High-speed rollers are spaced at specific widths to allow acceptable fruit to proceed uninterrupted while discarding broken, small, and immature tomatoes. Now that we've eliminated the broken and small fruit, it's time to take aim at green. These high-speed optical sorters will read the green tomato as it passes across the light and through an air activated valve will knock the green tomato into the discharge flume, thus joining the broken and small tomatoes to be used for ketchup, tomato paste, or tomato sauce. We've grated and sorted the fruit, and now it's time to follow the tomatoes into the processing facility as they make their way to the peeling operation. First, the tomatoes are scalded and dipped in a food grade lye treatment. Next, the tomatoes travel over a series of pinch rollers to remove the skin loosened by the scalder. Finally, the peeled tomatoes are rinsed and electronically sorted before leaving the peeling department. You may have heard the old adage that quality is only skin deep, but we take that very literally here. And these tomatoes have now been peeled, but what shows are some defects that we don't want in our canned tomatoes. Things like uh, insect bites, 
skin still remaining on the tomato, and yellow shoulders that are undesirable. And we're gonna sort those tomatoes into the middle and they're gonna go to make tomato puree or ketchup. The peeled and sorted tomatoes are filled in 100 ounce enameled lined tin cans. The filled cans are topped with heated tomato juice and a lid is seamed to the can. We now have the tomatoes safely in the can, but if we want them to stay there, we've got to cook the cans. Behind me is the series of cookers and coolers, capable of bringing the ambient temperature tomatoes up to 205 degrees in less than 30 minutes. One of these cookers holds 2,800 cans at a time, and through a spiral on its outer shell, it moves them continuously through the process. Once they've been cooked, to retain the flavor and the color, they immediately go into the cooler. We have just 100 days to process our tomatoes, but we need to keep you in stock all year. Therefore, the tomatoes need to be stacked efficiently on a pallet, they need to be stretch wrapped to keep dust and debris away, and they need to be stacked on these trailers to be transported to our Modesto distribution facility to await your order. Consistent quality, can after can, that's what we insist on. And that's why here in this Quality Assurance Lab, over 16 objective tests are taken uh, on all of our products to make sure they meet our standards and your expectations. Some of those tests include vacuum, headspace, drain weight, skin and other defects, soluble solids, essentially sugar, sodium, pH or acid content, and color. Well, that concludes the tour. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. I hope you've learned something. And most of all, I hope you have confidence now in the DiNapoli canned tomatoes, that they're the best in the industry, and that you'll use them as often as possible. Thanks for joining me.